Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make whole wheat banana muffins and this is what they look like. This is a really moist and flavorful muffin and not only do we have the flavors of whole wheat flour and bananas, we also have cinnamon flavor and vanilla and pure maple syrup. So, the first thing you will need to do is to preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 190 degrees Celsius. And then you will need a 12 cup muffin pan. Now you can line your muffin cups with paper liners, or what I'm going to do is butter my muffin cups. So I just melt a little bit of butter and then I'm using a pastry brush to brush the insides. You could also use one of, just spray the muffin cups with one of those nonstick sprays. I'll just do that. I've already done the rest. So now, I'm just going to make this batter by hand. You could use your uh, electric stand mixer with the paddle attachment, or you could even use a hand mixer, but it's pretty easy to make. So in a large bowl, I have one and a half cups, which is 195 grams of whole wheat flour. And then to that, I'm adding a half a cup, 65 grams of all-purpose flour. You may know that it's plain flour. And the reason I'm adding a, a little bit of all-purpose flour is any baked good that has um, whole wheat flour tends to be quite dense in texture. So if you add a little bit of just all-purpose flour, it kind of lightens that texture a bit. So um, now I'm going to add one teaspoon, four grams of baking powder a half a teaspoon, two grams of baking soda, a quarter of a teaspoon, one gram of salt, and last, a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I just think bananas and cinnamon just go very well together. You could uh, leave that out if you're not a big cinnamon uh, fan. So I'm just going to whisk that. You could sift it. Just make sure everything's all mixed together. And if you didn't want to use the all-purpose flour, if you just want to use the whole wheat, then just substitute, you know, the, the all-purpose for more whole wheat. And then I'm going to add some chopped nuts, a half a cup, 55 grams. Now I'm using uh, pecans because I think I like pecans with the uh, maple syrup, the, the caramel flavor. I think the two of them go really well together. Another good choice is walnuts or hazelnuts. And if you don't want to use nuts, you could just leave that out totally. You don't have to make any changes. Or you could substitute that with, you know, some dried fruit or even some chocolate chips. So I'm just going to mix that. Pretty simple. And then for our wet ingredients, I need my whisk. I have two large eggs. Have your eggs at room temperature. And then I'm just going to whisk to break them up. And then you will need one and a half cups, which is 360 milliliters of mashed bananas. So how much is that when you go to the store to buy bananas? I find about three this size, large, which is, if you want to go by weight, about a pound of bananas, 450 grams. So you want ripe bananas. That means it has the brown spots on them. Sometimes you can find off to the side in the grocery store, they have ripe bananas and they're a lot cheaper. That's what I found when I went to buy these. If not, you'll have to buy ripe, uh, you know, your firm bananas that are all yellow and then just wait a few days for them to soften on the counter. So mash them. Now you can do this different ways. Some people use a pastry blender. I use start with my fingers. And if you have leftover uh, bananas, what you can do is freeze them. I just take them out of the skins, put them in a freezer bag, pop them in the freezer, and then when I want to make banana bread or banana muffins or something, I can just take them out and defrost them. So I'm squish them up. And then I'm just going to take a fork and you know I don't mind it I don't want it to uh, you don't want to liquefy your your bananas I like you know still in some chunks but 
probably going to break that down just a little. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. There's still a few large chunks. Kind of tastes good when you bite into it, your muffin. Okay, so next I have a half a cup, 100 grams of firmly packed light brown sugar. And then one teaspoon, four grams of pure vanilla extract. If you don't want vanilla flavor, just leave it out. Um, the fat we're going to use is in liquid form. I'm using a third of a cup, 80 uh, milliliters grams of a flavorless oil, which means, you know, kind of canola, corn, vegetable, safflower oil. Could you use an equal amount of melted butter? Yes, you could. The good thing about oil is if you want to store your uh, muffins in the fridge, it, uh, the oil keeps them soft as opposed to if you use butter, it kind of hardens in the uh, fridge. So the muffins will be, you know, more firm. So now I'm also adding a third of a cup, uh, 80 milliliters grams of, I'm using buttermilk here. Buttermilk gives you a really um, tender uh, muffin, kind of a little more bread-like. You can buy buttermilk buy buttermilk powder. You could make a good substitute. Take a third of a cup, 80 milliliters of milk, add about maybe a teaspoon of lemon juice or a vinegar, stir it up, let it sit at room temperature about 10 minutes and use that. And then maple syrup, yum. Um, a third of a cup, 80 milliliters of pure maple syrup. Wonderful. Uh, maple syrup kind of has like a caramel flavor which is really good with the bananas and then the pecans. So, substitutes. Some people can't uh, find maple syrup. It is, tends to be a little expensive. You could use honey. You could use agave or a brown rice syrup. So there is, you know, other choices, depending on where you live and whether you have access to maple syrup. So just whisk all that together. Hmm. As you can see, we have a lot of great <laughs> ingredients here that's going to give us a real flavorful muffin. So now I'm just going to put a little well in the center and then wet into dry. The reason, one of the reasons I like to do this by hand is you don't want to overmix at this point. If you overmix, then your muffins will be a little tough and nobody likes that. You want it nice and soft and tender. So you can really judge it better if you're actually stirring it. <laughs> so what we're doing here is just make sure you want everything nice and everything moistened, all the dry ingredients. Okay, make sure you get the bottom of the bowl. Okay, and that's, that's our batter. So now, move this. Now if you have a large ice cream scoop, you can use that to fill your muffin cups. If not, you know, two spoons is absolutely fine. The important thing is you want to fill them all about the same amount so then they bake in the same time frame. So that's what you're looking for there. Okay, that looks good. Now, if you want to decorate the tops, what you could do, if you have an extra banana, you could use uh, some dried banana chips. Those are nice. Or you could just, you know, slice a banana and just put it on top. Good thing about that is, if you're serving these, then um, people know when they just look at it, oh, it's a banana muffin. So I'm just going to put one in the center of each. Okay, so 
big these. Everyone's oven, oven is a little different. The important thing is we do not want to overbake these or they will be dry. Nobody likes that. So somewhere between 18 and 22 minutes until the toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean. I would, just in case your oven's running a little hot, I would check them a little before that 18 minutes. And then you can kind of gauge how much longer. So 18 to 22 minutes. Okay, so our banana muffins are done. You see, risen and toothpick inserted into the center, comes out clean. So now, put your pan on a wire rack. I'm gonna let them cool, you know, maybe 10 minutes before taking them out of the pan. And when we come back, we will try one. To remove the muffins from the pan, if you're not using paper liners, I just have an offset spatula right on the side. And let's take them out like so. Now, the, uh, if you did put some fresh bananas slices on the top, they will turn brown as they sit over time. Sometimes what I like to do is to just heat a little bit of apricot jam and then brush the uh, tops of the bananas with that, and that will keep them nice and moist. So let's try one. As you can see... Inside, you get a little bit of chunks of banana and then the uh, pecans. Lots of flavor in this banana. You have, of course, the banana, the pecans. You know, the maple syrup adds just that little bit of uh, caramel flavor, which I really like, and they're wonderfully moist. Really nice muffin, a little different than your typical banana bread, banana muffin recipe. So try these. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.